welcome from Linda and I and the staff here at Government House in Canberra to this very special group of people. So the first reaction for most people, if you're saying Ebola is here, is not to be there. Your reaction was to say Ebola is there, people need our help, we can provide that help. And we thank you for that. Aspen Medical's mission is to provide world-class healthcare wherever it is needed, but particularly in locations that are remote, challenging and under-resourced. If one project encapsulates all of that, it is the Ebola response in Sierra Leone. Aspen Medical is currently the National Exporter of the Year. Yes, we export healthcare services, but it runs so much deeper than that. We export the best of what Australia is about compassion and a can-do attitude. Because of the talent and bravery like we have here of the, all you represented today, Aspen Medical can continue to go wherever we're needed. On behalf of all of us, thank you. Freetown was described by Dr John Gerard, who is with us today as the worst affected city in the worst affected country, in the worst ever epidemic of the most lethal communicable disease known. Our teams of expatriate and local staff were instrumental as part of the global effort to stem the advance of the disease and leave a legacy of a trained local workforce to combat any further outbreaks. Today, we are proud to have the opportunity to present the Humanitarian Overseas Support Medal with the West Africa clasp to some members of the expatriate team who worked in the crisis during 2014 and 2015. I think I came away with more than I went with because I mean our colleagues in country could teach us a lot um, with little resources. They want to share and they want to help. Actually, you know, for their fellow people was, to me, you know, heartwarming. Training local staff, that was um, fun because the training was about training us, more than us training them, and learning their cultures and how they actually do different things than what we do. Part of the training was also, I think, we left a legacy behind, teaching the nurses, you know, why are you giving that pain relief? What do you expect to get from that medication, rather than just handing out a tablet? Um, them understanding the values of doing observations. Some of the kids really got to me. Some of the children didn't know who you were unless you did the little hand thing and they could actually tell your eyes. Um, we did a lot of dancing in there, um, but we're in PPE, so it was very, very different. Yeah. Getting off the ground was uh, certainly getting people uh, into into the, both the areas, into Sierra Leone and Liberia. There were two flights a week only for the global response team to get in via Brussels. So it had to be super organised to get clinicians into country. Firstly, then we had to find the appropriate level of training, and then we had to find the logistics and the local skill sets to help us finish building, you know, things like electricians, plumbers and the like. So they're pretty scarce in countries which had been beset by conflict for the last 20, 30 years as well. When we look at a, a country which has been ravaged by conflict, a country which is then ravaged by this disease, the absolute level of tolerance in both countries for the society was absolutely incredible. You can learn a lot of people that don't have very much and the way that they treat each other and the welcoming attitude they had for us. I suppose that's going to be my enduring memory of, particularly of Sierra Leone, was a friendliness and coherence of the society. I think for me it was one of those profound, um, profound experiences of knowing that the first world is in an incredibly privileged position in relation to the developing world. It probably hasn't changed my career path, it's more made me really conscious of how privileged we are and that we have, I think, a responsibility where we can to participate in these kinds of endeavours, to share our expertise, to pass on that knowledge, to create that expertise in other countries who are less fortunate than us. The critical issue that we faced was that the epidemic was at its peak 
and there were 300 cases per week being seen at that stage in Freetown alone. And we had to stop this epidemic based on a theory alone. The theory that by isolating the sick, quarantining their contacts and disposing of the dead safely that this epidemic would come under control. This seemed like an extraordinary ask and it was not clear that this was going to work at all. So we were basing our response on a theory alone. We've been able to uh, impact the current Ebola outbreak in, in uh, the Democratic Republic of Congo because of the experience that was gained in West Africa. We became much better at preventing infection among healthcare workers and having effective infection control in Ebola treatment centres. In our treatment centre at the Hastings Airfield, for example, we had no infections whatsoever among our staff. This is because of the experience that was gained steadily over the time that we spent in West Africa. That is not just us, but the other treatment centres, of course, throughout West Africa. So that is probably the biggest legacy. Also during that time in West Africa, the, the vaccine was first introduced and the concept of ring vaccination was first tried. And this is now being rolled out in Central Africa, in the Congo.